Jessica. <laughs> Jeremy received the grace of God in Jesus before God ever said, let there be light. That is how long God has known Jeremy. Long ago, Jesus did what was necessary to secure Jeremy's right relationship with God and then set him apart to do the work of the ministry. Yes, the church may be setting Jeremy apart today in this service, but the church is just catching up <laughs> with what God did years ago even before the creation of the world. In Jesus, Jeremy, like the prophet Jeremiah, has salvation as well as vocation. That is a job to do in Christ's church. This salvation and vocation, rooted in the past, also extends into the future. Because God says that he will rescue Jeremiah. Jeremiah's ministry lasted at least 40 years. <coughs> he had a long ministry. And during those decades, clergy, that is the ministers, clergy and politicians both tried to kill him. You read about that later on in the book. People were always after Jeremiah to take his life because they wanted to shut him up. They didn't like his faithful preaching. And they never succeeded. Yeah, they made his life miserable to be sure at times. But they never succeeded in taking his life. Now, I know it's true that the book of Jeremiah ends with Jeremiah going off to Egypt against his will. He had told these people, don't go to Egypt. We never rely on Egypt in the Old Testament. <laughs> Egypt always fails you. Jeremiah told these people, don't go to Egypt. What do they do? They go to Egypt and they take him with them. And that's where the book ends. And presumably that's where Jeremiah's life ended as well, was in Egypt. That's true. The book does end with Jeremiah in a place that he didn't want to go. But we have to remember at this point <coughs> what, Jeremiah, what Jeremy learned in seminary, what we call the tension between the already and the mean by that is God has already begun a good work in the lives of his people. Jeremiah, Jeremy, you and I who are trusting in Jesus. God has already begun a good work, but he hasn't yet finished it. God hasn't chosen to make everything right at this time. He didn't make everything right in Jeremiah's day, and that's why the prophet finished out his life in Egypt against his will. And God hasn't yet made everything right in your life or in mine. God is progressively, but certainly, working in the lives of his people to accomplish his will. But he doesn't do that all at once. Setbacks and disappointments can and do occur in the lives of God's people. They did in Jeremiah's life. They will in Jeremy's life. They have in mind, and they will in yours. For now, God's people can expect to suffer in this still 
fallen world. We live out our trust and our obedience in the midst of hardship and heartache. This broken world doesn't always have satisfying news. At least not yet. But God keeps His promises. God keeps His promises. And that's what God is telling Jeremiah in this passage. And that's what He's telling Jeremy. I will rescue you. I'm in control. And I will make good, fully and finally, on my promises to my people. And we know this on the basis of what God has already done for us. What Jesus has already accomplished on our behalf is the fulfillment of God's word through his prophets. I don't know if we're going to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion in this service. My guess is that we will. And when Jesus instituted that sacrament, he talked about the new covenant in my blood. Well, where did Jesus get that terminology, new covenant? He got it from the book of Jeremiah. Specifically, chapter 31. My point is, God who has begun a good work in the lives of his people, even you and me, will finish that work. He will redeem the labor of our hands that is done for the glory of his Son. He promised to do that for the prophet Jeremiah. And he promises to do that for all of his servants, including Jeremy. Jeremy, you won't always understand what God is up to in your life in ministry. You probably know that by now. And you're learning it. And you don't like learning it any more than I do. And most of the other people in this room. You may feel, as Jeremiah later did, that God has taken advantage of you. Jeremiah uses very strong language in chapter 20. He accuses God of seducing him. <coughs> Jeremiah actually lamented the day of his birth and wanted to die. That's how much hardship and heartache there was in his ministry. He just wanted to get out of it. And he couldn't believe that God was doing this to him and putting him through this. It made no sense. All he wanted was out. You, Jeremy, may find yourself <laughs> at some point in a similar frame of mind. The way to handle such discouragement is not to go back to your birth. That's what Jeremiah did. Why did I ever come out of my mother's womb? In chapter 20. He goes back to his birth and thinks that's where everything went wrong. The problem is Jeremiah did 